everyone and welcome to today's edition of my Become Unstoppable series and as always I'm always excited but I have another amazing guest for you who I will introduce to you in a moment but first of all those who don't know me my name is Julie Fitzpatrick and I'm the founder of Millicide Therapy and Coaching and I support stressed out individuals really to build their confidence and find their inner, inner peace and clarity so that they can become unstoppable and I work with clients on a one-to-one -one basis, but from now on, I am launching my new group program. And this is about your breakthrough, taking you from stress, lack of confidence, to clarity and focus. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Hannah to you. This is a good friend of mine, Hannah, who, as you can see from the title, is a food freedom coach. But Hannah, take it over, girl. Introduce yourself how you know best. Hello, and I'm Hannah. Thank you very much, Julie. I'm a food freedom coach. And what I mean by that is I enable people to radically transform their relationship with food. So they're able to eat what they want, when they want, without any guilt, shame or fear. And um, for most people, that means nothing. But anyone that's ever struggled with food or eating disorders or disordered eating habit, it means everything. So that's me for now. Wow. And I know there's some good stuff coming up in a minute, but before we start, I have to ask you that I ask all my guests a very special question. Tell me, Hannah, what does being unstoppable mean to you? I think being unstoppable is featured through many areas of my life, and it's basically not giving in to any barrier and just pushing your way through to where you want to be. And I truly believe when there's something that you feel is really important and valuable, you can actually do that. Something that excites you and mm -hmm. that you believe in, it's so much easier than if you're trying to force yourself in the wrong way or down the wrong path. So there's a sign there. Mm, I love that. Because whatever we do in life, if we push ourselves and do something different and step outside our comfort zone, we're all likely to feel that discomfort. But it's about really digging deep, isn't it? And when it's something like you say that you really, really want, you've got to have that determination. And we, we will cover this later throughout this conversation without a doubt that being entrepreneurs, business owners, you are constantly pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. And I spent... 35 years in the corporate world and there were times when I really pushed myself but other times not so much and you just get on with it because you're just on that treadmill of life don't you and um yeah I probably could have and should have maybe have pushed myself a bit more but it wasn't really my purpose <laughs> or my passion but hey ho I don't regret any of it because I don't believe in regrets but I just if I could play back a few years I wish I could have done what I'm doing now a little bit earlier. How about you? Yeah, and I think actually lockdown really helped me because mm. like you, um, we're women in the prime of our life, and to quote Jean Brody, and, um, <laughs> you know, lockdown, I actually loved it. It took me out of my job, my nine yeah. to five, and... Mm. It gave me time to think and appreciate what I really wanted to do. Mm. And, and this has been a cause I've wanted to do for, for years, for decades. But I didn't know how to do it and I didn't know how to succeed. So it gave me a chance in lockdown to actually sit there and work through what it was I wanted in life, how I could contribute, who I could help and what I needed to do. Mm. So yeah, I, I, can you relate to that at all, Julie? Completely, yeah. Because lockdown for me, that was when I got my curveball as well, when in the middle of the pandemic, I was working in London, like two hour round trip, you know, didn't realise then that I was suffering from the perimenopause and I really lost my confidence and all that stuff. Yeah, and I, and I found myself with that, wonderful curveball of not being employed anymore and that's when I started my journey so absolutely and yeah it done me a huge a huge 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 favor actually but 
anyway, let's talk about you, right? So you are this wonderful entrepreneur now, this food freedom coach. But why why that? Why did you end up doing that? I'm, I mean, we know from life's things when, you know, all the entrepreneurs we know in a, in a group coaching that there's something that's happened to us that's made us do what we're doing. But would you mind giving everyone an up, you know, a bit of background about why you ended up doing this? Um, what's your story? What's made you up? To, how did you end up being the unstoppable woman that you are now? Well, as I said, I'm a food freedom <laughs> coach, um, meaning I have complete freedom around food, uh, which it really hasn't been like that all the time because. I struggled from the age of 20 until the age of 50 um, around food. Um, first of all, I would, in my early 20s, I just had this compulsion to eat and then I'd starve myself. I'd do extreme exercise. Um, every moment of my day was actually affected by thoughts of food, what I'd eat next, what I wouldn't need next, whether I was being good, um, had I burnt enough calories. I mean, these ridiculous, ridiculous concepts looking back. But mm -hmm. I realized, you know, um, after about five years of this, I ended up actually being bulimic and I was bulimic for about 25 years on and off. I'd have periods when I was fine. I loved being pregnant. I would, uh, and for a year after that, I wouldn't be. And then I would trigger it back. Just as you think, oh, I've beaten that. You know, you self-sabotage. And what is that all about? And also struggling. I believed being a strong woman, being highly capable and intelligent, all I needed was willpower and strength of will to beat it. And I now know that's not enough. And... Honestly, the misery it brought me, it damaged my relationship, it affected my focus at work, it affected my family, although I, I, di I didn't believe it did at the time because I believed yeah. it was a secret. My husband yeah. didn't know about it for about 10 years. He was unaware. Really? He, was, he was busy doing his stuff. You know, I was at home with kids and he was going to work. So I could hide it. And it was the times when I was on my own, completely on my own, that I had the issues. When there were people around, I was fine. When I was doing what I loved, I was fine. So I'd even go into extreme sports and take up sports and hobbies that I never believed of, just to distract myself, because that gave me something that I needed, the lack of which was making me eat. So distraction, I've, I tried that, but that doesn't work permanently, as you'll know. So mm. it just buries the problem deeper. So, yeah. Um, after all this time, to cut a long story thought short, um, and having studied nutrition and every diet and every plan going around, um, I realized, you know, it's taken me 30 odd years to, to get over it. And when I got over the bulimia, it still took me another five years to actually find food freedom and I really did it the long drawn out way believing all the time I could beat it I could beat it I'm strong I've got willpower I mean my strength of will in other areas is brilliant you know I can do nearly anything I set my mind to this I couldn't so yeah as I said having done it the long way I've now created a very much shorter way and a program mm. that can help people overcome it very quickly Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a bit, but I don't want to let you off the hook too easily because there's going to be people watching this, right, are probably thinking, please, Julie, ask her what went on. What, why did you have, knowing what you know now, why, what were your triggers then? What, why did you have an eating disorder? As, but obviously only share that you, what you're willing to share. No, absolutely. And when you dig really deeply down and, and we go to subconscious level, I wanted mm. to be loved, ultimately. And I wanted to fit in. And I also wanted what other people wanted but couldn't seem to get. Mm. And this goes right back to childhood. And oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably that, yeah. yeah it's, it's when you, yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> We will share with the, with the, the viewers in a moment why we know this, but yeah, go on. 
Yeah, absolutely. So the need to be loved and to be enough was mm. ruling my life. And I think I had a very strict parent, mother. And my parents, they never told us they loved us. They never hugged and kissed us like we do today. Uh, but I knew I was loved and they were very mm. caring. They made sure we were fed, we were warm, we had a good education and most importantly, a good education from their point of view. And we were provided for. And bearing in mind, my, I grew up, uh, I was born in 1960, so I grew up in the 60s. My father had a steady job. We had a, a, it, just enough money to um, mm. keep going. There, were, there weren't any extras. There were no luxuries. Uh, mm. But we, I had a great childhood. But you still couldn't get that thing you need, the hug, the, um, the love that you believe well, you need, or well, some people need. I needed it. Yeah. So we, we know we know now, don't we, from the training and things that we've done that, um, well, any anyone who may or may not have heard Maslow and his hierarchy of needs, that we have the triangle, don't we? And yes. the very bottom of the triangle is having your your basic needs met, which is food, air, shelter. You know, somewhere safe to live and be, which you 100% had but it sounds yeah. like your emotional needs weren't met in the way that you needed them to be met <clears throat> yeah I'd agree with that and I, I think my father really showed love educating us so he'd walk us to school he'd talk about the trees and my way of impressing him when you come to love languages my way of impressing him was to be clever so it was in my utmost interest because if I could be clever and really good at school, I got praise and acknowledgement. And mm. that is the one thing that did it. So I worked really hard for the first 10 years of my life to be the best in the class. Mm. And, you know, this, that and the other, you, you know where I'm going. But, you know, it made me a perfectionist, which is... <laughs> And you realise later on in life what you perceive are your strengths are actually your weaknesses. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse, isn't it? It is. It is like everything. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah um, there was that need. Um, the second one was to fit in. And, of course, my mother's Norwegian, so she knitted, knitted me these amazing, chunky Norwegian jumpers. But they were different from everyone else's at school. I had layers and layers on because my mother has a fear of the colds naturally. And um, I was called fatty because I just had so many clothes on all the time. So that was that as well. So that triggered, that was the first thing. I didn't want to be fat. My next door neighbor and best friend, Maria, um, she's built completely different to me. I'm short and chunky and strong. And and she wasn't much taller, but she was elegant and lean and a ballet dancer and graceful. So I wanted to be like her. You know, when we knelt down, my, my thighs were twice the size of her. Now, I wasn't fat, but already the messages are going there. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. And then I, when I was 13, because my father has a huge value on health and fitness, I, um, I can remember... I was at school, so I must have been about 13, 14. And he just said, Hannah, you're getting fat. And he hadn't noticed the awful haircut I'd had that made that yes. everyone else called me bird's nest. But he noticed I put on a couple of pounds, you know. And for me, that was the kick in the stomach. And I think it was from there. He, he hadn't, he was trying to be kind, like, yeah. you know, get yourself in check, you know, because that was his values. He was imposing his values on me. And you know, we are so programmed by our upbringing and by our community, by a religion, if that's what we're involved with. You know, mm. there are so many voices guiding us at a very mm. early age, and we conform to that. And at first, until we don't. So, yeah, we you, find you, do that. you just triggered a memory for me, actually. I mean, luckily, apart from when I hit the menopause, I haven't suffered from yes. weight issues right however you have just triggered a memory for me <laughs> I'm, I'm like one of three I'm the middle child right so yeah. obviously obviously I've got middle child syndrome and because that goes without saying right um but 
my eldest sister and younger sister were both stick insects mm -hmm. and I was the porky one. Yes. And my uncle always used to call me porky. Yeah. And when we were children, <laughs> God knows why we did, I suppose it was a thing back then, but we used to collect soaps, but they were like shaped soaps. Oh, you know, right. like you'd get like your Disney characters and yes. and when you had a shelf in the bedroom, it was just a dust collector now when I think about it, but all these different, different, all the different soaps, right? And I remember him buying me Porky Pig. <laughs> now, luckily, that didn't, for whatever reason, yes. <laughs> trigger and eat. But but that's the sort of thing, right? You know, yeah. they thought they were being funny. Porky yeah. Pig. Yeah. You know. And yeah. but they did used to say to me, "Oh, you you will grow out of it," and thankfully I did. But that could have been a real real trigger for me, couldn't it? And, yes, and of that's course. What about it. And it, an innocent, well, we call it having fun and banter, but it, AKA bullying sometimes, isn't it? Like the bullying aspects, you know, and it can have that knock on effect, right? Which clearly it did for you. Yes. Yeah. Repetitive messaging. Mm. You know, programming our subconscious. And you've also triggered another thought, right? Okay. I don't know why I'm laughing. So I'm, I'm enjoying but, um, <laughs> I'm going on a radio show in a little while. It's, it's not a well-known one or anything yet, but, and I've had to, over the weekend, I've had to be thinking about my top five. It's doing it like a um, Desert Island Disc type thing, coming up with my top five. So me and my son and my husband were doing it last night, and um, it's been really hard because I thought, but anyway, one, one, one of the, I wanted to have carpenters on my list, but they're not on it now because I've run out of space. But <laughs> Karen Carpenter, she actually died of an eating disorder in the end, didn't she? Yeah. And that was triggered by reporters saying um, the chubby sister in the carpenters. I always remember that. Mm -hmm. And that was a trigger for her, wasn't it, of her eating disorder because yeah. of some – smart ass reporter who called her chubby now sure yeah, she probably had other other beliefs didn't she but that that was the start of it all yeah and the same for freddie flintoff you know he I came out in the bbc order. um documentary in 22 i think and it was in, when he was in his 19s i think it was reporters um oh, you know right. calling him either chubby or something like that but he became mm. bulimic mm. because of that so, yeah, yeah. It, it does affect high performers. It does affect people in the public eye. And I think the reported incidences are just the tip of the iceberg. Seriously, there are so mm. many um, celebrities. Some come out, most don't. They keep it secret. But also mm. high-performing executives in the office, you know, they're great during the day. They appear happy. But in the in evening... Mm. They just flop and go and they just start eating and can't stop. I know it's there. They've never sought help. And, mm. you know, that that's why I've set up what I've set up, because I know um, these people want help if they believe it works. Mm. And that's what I've had to create. And, and this is the thing. I mean, Diana, obviously, is another good example, isn't it? Print, yes. you know, the, the late great Diana. I mean, geez, what she went through. But... Yes. What, let, let's just go back again, though, just let because this is where we really um, entwine in what we do, right? Yes. So when we we first met, um, what how I work with my clients is I do lots of other techniques as well, but use hypnotherapy and rapid transformational therapy, which yes. was created by a wonderful lady called Marissa Peer. And we were at an event and you mentioned her name. And I went, oh, who are you, you trained in that? And then he went, oh, no, no, I used to work for her. And I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> but do you want to tell me your sort of kind of connection there, how that um Yeah, I was um, traveling in L.A. at the time and I wasn't actually working for her. I was working for someone else. That's right, but yeah. we were driving her around LA in 2013 <laughs> to connect her with people that made things happen. This was before her Mind Valley days. And um, I, I was working as a personal assistant at the time. So I was in the car with her. But to me, she made complete sense. And, you know, that's why I studied hypnotherapy. 
because I realized she had something very special. Mm. And what she could do was take people to a result quickly, not years and years of therapy, not years, mm. thousands and thousands of dollars in some case to get mm. to an end result That's eventually. Really. Yeah. Mm. And by getting to the actually root cause, which you can do very quickly through hypnotherapy, because it's just mm. a deep, relaxed state, mm -hmm. turning off your conscious mind, which is protecting you. Your conscious mm. wants to keep you the same. That's it right. doesn't want to change. That's why we keep failing on a diet. That's why, mm. you know, we, um, we can't push our way through to where we want to be because there's something that mm. wants us to stay where we are. You know, well, this is the thing, isn't it? Our brain's job is to keep us safe, isn't it? And it will go for safety and comfort. He doesn't, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't want to change. And this is where, you know, you can, I mean, most, I talk about this most times, but people who don't know, I mean, 5% of our brain is conscious, 95 is subconscious. And that means our whole body is our subconscious mind, right? But when we have limiting beliefs, like you described, um, they, they are beliefs that mainly we create between the ages of zero and seven, which mm -hmm. literally blows my mind. But <laughs> equally, what makes it even worse is that we don't really have logic at that stage either, do we? So we are living life, our lives on decisions we made when, maybe when we were four or five years of our age. Yes. And when I did my training with Marissa Peer, I, I was lucky enough to do it live with her in London um, in all the training over the, throughout the year as well. Her thing was... Of all, like you said, she's worked, she's been a therapist for 30 odd years, probably more than that now, but with some very famous people as well, which obviously yeah. she doesn't tell us who they are, which is a little bit annoying. But, um, <laughs> but um, it was about, the, you know, you said about how you felt, like you felt different. She says there's only like three or four main root causes. I felt different. So you felt different because you dressed different and that, that made you stand out. The other one, the most common one, is I I don't I'm not good enough. That mm -hmm. comes up all the time. And the other main one is I'm not lovable. I'm I you know I don't feel loved. Now if you think about it, you had all of them. Well, yes. maybe well, although you know you were loved, you didn't have that lovable connection that you wanted. Yeah, yeah the human touch. Then, I think. Yeah, yeah, and that impacts all of your life forever then, doesn't it? Until you, you understand it and change it. Because then that has a knock-on effect with relationships, how you do anything. Because if you've got that root belief that, you know, you're not good enough or you're different, then you're never going to find that success because your sub, your, that belief is always going to suck you back. So you can talk consciously, I'm amazing, I'm phenomenal. And then as soon as you take your finger off, the, you know, you stop thinking about it, your subconscious will kick in. And that will always win. And they'll be going, no, honey, you're not, are you, darling? You're not lovable, though, are you? And do you yes. know what? You're a bit different, aren't you? Oh, my God. And then you're back You're back to it. And that's when when you're getting a trigger, that's when, in your case, you were having, you were going off and being cheating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what? How did, how did you find out? Did you do a hypnosis then to find out what your root cause was? Yeah, eventually, yes. And that was about mm. 2016. And since then, I think I had done so much work on myself, so much personal development since 2000. So, you know, it's, but still, you know, I wasn't there mm. and couldn't beat it. You know, I, I, you know, I was desperately trying without anyone knowing why I was doing it. Mm. That's why I was doing it. So I'd done this personal development work and I just needed the it was the cherry on the cake that solved the problem for me and I think people are often so close mm. to a solution and you know whatever the problem you know what whether it's a midlife crisis whether it well it doesn't really matter any issue or challenge they have they're often so close and they just need the final piece of the puzzle to go in mm. to be able to yeah not just understand, but I, I totally agree with you. The power it has over you, the subconscious mm. power. So that's really what we want, isn't it? So it's not that mm. um, I don't want my customers to be. I don't want to eat food anymore. I don't want that extreme. I want them to be indifferent about mm. it. 
Um, so they can either take it or leave it. And when they're full, they're full. They know they're full. They don't need any more. But enjoy what they eat, you know? And you'll be like similar with your um, customers. Yeah. 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 I mean, I haven't. I mean, in the way that I work, I could work with food disorders, but I haven't and I don't tend to because I think it's a very specialised area, isn't it? I mean, Marissa Peerwood, she would, you know, in, when we watched her do the training and in the training portal, she would have, you name it, she's done it. And and the process that we do can be done for anything, absolutely anything. And I have done it on physical conditions. I've done it on arthritis. I've done it on autoimmune diseases. I've done it on skin conditions. I've done it on um getting someone to walk again uh, you know uh, sugar addictions but my main focus now is stress anxiety and lack of confidence because if you specialize a little bit then you can you, you can become known for it then can't you yeah. so yeah. if someone came to me with an eating disorder i i probably wouldn't feel comfortable dealing with it and another reason why i wouldn't feel comfortable dealing with it is because i haven't been through that and I'm not saying we have to have been for everything to fix people, but I think with weight, it's very specialism, isn't it? And and the reason people will come to you is because you're authentic and you've been through that process and your target audience pretty much are people that are going through what you went through, but you're trying to close that window rather than them have to go 20 years to find the solution soon as they find out who you are and they're ready to make a change, they can get in contact with you and quickly get that resolved, which we will talk about in a minute, I promise, in your programme. <laughs> yes. My mind likes to work chronologically here. In the same way with my clients, my ideal client now, and we go through all of this in our business training, it does our heading, doesn't it? Who's your niche? Who's your target audience, right? And it's yeah. taken me a while to get there. Mine was women in their prime in the beginning, and that's what our website says, but that needs to be rebranded. But that's fine. It doesn't really matter. That's just, you know, here on it. But my target audience now are people who were me a few years ago, right? And that was either stuck in the, I say corporate world, but obviously it could be any paid employment, really, where you're stressed, lacking in confidence. And you're, the, the main things are, the three problems I solve are, Take, teaching people to go from self-neglect to self-respect, right? Mm -hmm. Because it all goes back to being present, looking after yourself, the plain analogy, putting the mask on, right? So we yes. go through all the mindset stuff around that, how to get you in the right frame of mind. And then we look at going from time poor to time abundance, right? Because most people are, I haven't got time for this. I'm too busy to look after myself. I'm running around with the kids. I'm, I'm at work. Da, 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 da. I haven't got time to go to the gym. I haven't got the time to eat properly. But then it's the third problem is how that impacts you physically. Yes. And that's when it can impact psychologically, psychologically with the common issues like stress, anxiety, you know, and all that stuff procrastination blah, blah blah but also the physical way it impacts your body so it could be any issues with health yes. like those ones I just mentioned right because it's where we haven't released our feelings and emotions from our body so I focus around that really so that's my target so it's people in the in a job who want to either get out of it or struggling in it can't go for that promotion because I haven't got the confidence or want to go for a new job or I've got the people who are in the middle who, how I was a year ago, you know, in that job, but trying to find their purpose and passion in, in their setting up their new business, or me now, who's just in their business, which is where we are now, isn't it? That, and then all, all the woes of that. So for me, I want to attract people that get me, understand me. Obviously, you want them to like and trust you, um, which is why I started doing all this, really, because it's about putting yourself out there. But by hitting that target audience, it's easier to get people into your world. And the same for you, right? You, mm -hmm. you. If someone says, "Oh, I want to give up smoking," then you're not. You're going to go, "Okay, well, that's not my field. I can sign posters to someone else, isn't it?" Because yeah. yeah, sure, you could do that probably with the skills that you've got. But it's about being focused and being really good at a particular area, isn't it? Oh, completely. And I think um, you and I have come across so many great coaches 
Mm. You know, and all the best coaches I find are actually providing a service to solve the problem they wish they had had X amount of years ago. Mm. So I think you can you become more relatable because mm. you've got something in common. They want to yeah. be where you are now, <laughs> you know? So right. mm. yeah. And, and you and, and cut that time as well, isn't it? You, your people, you don't. If you get some, you, I guess you you help different ages, do you? Let's let's cover that up. Do you only help a I, certain age group? Or? I focus on professional professionals. It's normally women, but also retired athletes because yes. they have a. Oh, please they, tell them about your athletes in a minute when you're ready. Yeah, but when yeah. they don't have no longer have a coach, say so you've got to be this amount here, this amount there, they can actually go off the scale. They have a problem too. So, um, and it's a real problem. But the reason um, I target these two markets in particular is they're goal driven. And I want people mm. that really want to change, that can mm. meet a goal and will take all the steps required to actually do it. So Absolutely. it's not just training the conscious it's also reprogramming the subconscious but if your logic doesn't relate to that you're never going to get there likewise you could relate to the logic but if you haven't dealt with that unmet need you'll mm. rebound back to old habits so yeah. that is why i've targeted the market because a they're responsible adults responsible for their own thing i would love to speak to children but I know I became aware of bulimia because I heard Jane Fonda talking about it and how everyone was doing it when I was 20. I read an article about her and I thought, how disgusting is that? Whoever does that to me, it repulsed me so much. I thought that is really disgusting. However, roll on five years, there I am. But I'd never have heard about it if I hadn't read about it. So I think <laughs> kids these days are a lot more aware with social media, um, with the internet, they're a lot more aware of these things. But I know at 90 and I've never heard of it. So I'm also very wary of that. But I would help an 18-year-old if they came to me. But I'm mm. not targeting them. Targeting, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, isn't it? That's what we have to get our heads around when we're business owners and niching. Yeah. It doesn't mean we can't help the other people, but we need to make sure that we're doing our social media or or telling our story Yes. to a particular audience otherwise it doesn't resonate does it completely, um, completely. You, you, you you could absolutely 100 percent get a young person because they go oh hang on that Anna, she she might be you know in her prime now but she said she suffered it for 20 years well i don't want to do that <laughs> and that's what's important it's the same with you know the people i work with you don't need to suffer anymore no and that no. this is what's important right anxiety, stress, bulimia, any of these psychological or physical conditions, you don't have to be like that. There is no. help out there. And yes. like you said earlier, it can, it can, we can get, if we can get to the root cause, we can, we can resolve this really quickly. Now I'm not knocking talking therapy because I trained as a counselor years ago. Yes. But talking therapy we're talking with our conscious mind and it's the subconscious mind we need to get to and it, yeah. you can get fantastic results and I got some great results with my clients however there were times when I just thought to myself I don't know how I'm going to help this person anymore I didn't know I didn't have the knowledge that I've got now and it and I feel sad for that because I just it, it kind of just got on a plateau and I actually get a lot of clients actually now who um have been through the, the traditional therapy route and it, they just haven't got the results they're after. Yeah. And a lot of that is because if you imagine that you're like um, a shrub or something, a beautiful plant, and you can't get to the sunlight because you've got all these weeds grabbing onto you, like bell and ivy, right? You go and you go and talk about stuff and that could be really, really, really powerful, but you're trimming them down, but eventually they're going to grow back. Yeah. So if we get to the root, we can yank it out and it's gone. And, and that's what you're doing as well, isn't it? It's getting to the root of what's causing them to have bulimia. Yes. 
or binge eating, overeating, emotional eating, compulsive eating, the whole lot. You get rid of the compulsive yeah. eating, the emotional eat, eat, eating. You've got rid of bulimia because that's mm. what triggers it. So, um, you know, bulimia is a symptom of the binge eating. <laughs> you know, yeah. binge eating is a symptom of um, an unmet emotional need buried mm. deep down. And you'll know that we keep all of our emotions things just underneath the surface so as you were talking about the head and the body being the subconscious you'll know that just beneath the head is where our emotions are and sometimes um the emotions are just ready to bubble up to your conscious mind mm. and for those people they don't need hypnotherapy they can deal with it. You can coach them through it, which mm. I love doing. You know, my online course will cover that for them. Mm. But for those people that still aren't quite there, hypnotherapy is the most amazing tool. And I was very skeptical about it. Believe me. <laughs> me <too. laughs> really? Really? You can do that quickly? And, um, you know, but that some people have suffered such deep trauma they they've buried it so deep in it's actually unconscious their mm. mind has protected them from revisiting that trauma and it can mm. bubble up in different ways but i've had two clients that have completely forgotten the horrific trauma they suffered but they could only remember anything until the age of 10 or 7 mm. you know for each mm. of them and I knew there was something that had happened before them. Yeah. And it was only through hypnotherapy, they were able to go there. And mm. we neutralize that. You can transform someone's life. No, I know. It's so exciting, isn't it? Oh, I know. There's I know, no feeling in the world like it. That's why I love I what I do. I know, it, absolutely true. My husband says something really amazing. Um, and he made me cry on at the weekend, right? We were watching yeah. George Michael. Um, oh, it was I well, I don't know if it was that one, but it was just one, and they were just playing some of his. And I, whenever I see it, it makes me really sad because, yeah, likes of him, Rob, Robbie, Willie, Robbing Williams, and people like that, right? Some, so many like Whitney Houston, mm -hmm. but he said to me, "Yeah, I said it's such a shame," and he said, "Yeah, if he had worked with you, he'd probably still be here now." Yes, and I was like. That's such a lovely thing to say, but it just frustrates me so much because I think that people are out there suffering when they don't need to. And like you said, like the fact that we can get up every day, do what we do and transform people's lives, you can't make that up. It's, it's phenomenal. It but what we have to get better at is making sure that we put ourselves in a position where we we have to make sure we're working on ourselves all the time right which we are we both got business coaches i still do therapy training all the time right and i'm learning yes. more all the time and i know you do too because it's important that we keep ourselves in a good place keep ourselves mentally safe um and i do techniques now that i didn't even know about at all like releasing things from my body i do exercise in the morning i do my meditation every day because it's important that I'm putting myself first and that's the key to all of this right and when I stop doing that that's when I can't serve my clients if I'm not well I can't serve my clients the same for yeah. you right yeah and that's what I teach my clients really it's about you've got to put yourself first but people feel guilty and I yes. say to them that self-care is not an option it is mm -hmm. mandatory yes and investing in yourself is the best thing you can ever do and it might feel not if it's not available to everybody, but if you're relatively, you know, got some money coming in, you need to look at what you're spending your money on and go, actually, maybe I will be better off investing that in myself. And, you know, someone who's suffering from any kind of food things, come and work with you. Anyone that's suffering from any other psychological stress, anxiety, come and see me because you don't have to suffer. Now, before I get on my bandwagon even more, <laughs> I want you to share what you're doing about your program. But, but can, before you do that, though, can you just tell people about your – well, well, before I get a guest on, right, I get them to fill a form in about, um, you know, why are they unstoppable. And this had – one that Hannah sent back, it was like, really? Oh, my <laughs> day. Right? You know what I'm talking about here. 
tell them a yes. bit about your unstoppable journey about um you know go on <laughs> yeah well I'm a mum I've got three kids two boys and a girl and when my eldest was about 10 they were obsessed with watching um, wrestling on TV uh, with their mates, um, playing on the Xbox. But most of the stuff was seated. And I just wanted to get them active. So uh, a friend of mine said, oh, come to Tang Sudo, a martial art, a Korean martial art that was taught locally. So I thought, OK, I'll, I'll take them all to that. She said, Grace will love it too. So they all, we got them all dressed up in their little kits. Off they go, looking very cute. So they're at the time, they're nine, um, no, 11, nine and seven. Got to think, can't remember. And um, take them along there. And then they are in this class. But um, I'd always liked aerobics, but not loved it. I liked what it did. And I liked doing it on my own. I hated the classes because I, was, I wasn't coordinated. So um, um, I took them and I was watching them. I thought, oh, my God, I want to do this. They were training for two hours. You know, the first hour I was looking at this and I think, oh, my God, this is I love this. I really want to do this. And uh, who knew I even like martial arts? So I, I went along. <laughs> <laughs> went along i'm 40 at the time and um joined in and i absolutely loved it we all entered all the competitions um local competitions the national competitions my son would get a european silver medal um my middle son but you know none of the, <laughs> the rest of us featured and we keep going and i i used to dread these competitions it's whole day and you're sitting there and I'd, I'd just lose, lose, lose in all three categories. You know, it's just a non-competitive. So um, how do you do that? Well, I need to get a coach. And the top um, student in our class was actually the world champion, you know, at 1,500 competitors in um, Orlando, he'd actually won uh the world championships and i actually asked my master would you train me one-on-one -on -one? because i i want to win something or at least get a medal i just want to compete and <laughs> i was going to ask um mark allen so i did and um do you know after four hours mm -hmm. training with him a month later mm -hmm. i actually got gold medal in the national championships in my category which blew wow. my mind I couldn't believe it. But it's like I say, you're nearly there. I had all the enthusiasm. I, I wanted it really badly. I just hadn't mm. had the fine tuning. Mm. And that's what you could give me. And seriously, four hours, uh, or four different one hour lessons. And that's what a difference a coach can make. It can mm. fine tune you to get to where you want to be. Um, later that year, having qualified for the. Um, World champs, I went over to Orlando and in my category, the over 29s, bearing in mind of 40 then, um, I got a silver medal and a bronze medal. Great. And the following year or two years later, I, I went to, and it was actually in Cambridge, UK, and got double gold in, in the European champs. But I wow. loved it. I absolutely yeah. loved it. But without that coaching, mm. that person to look from the outside inside, we'll tweak this a bit, we'll move that a bit. And, um, you know, it and what a brilliant it. segue to tell them about your program now. Yeah, well, I've just launched. Obviously, I do my one to one coaching, which I love, but it, not everyone can access it. So mm. I've launched an online program um, called the Bin Beat the Binge Eating Trap. So it's a six module course, one module per week. You work through it. It trains it. And right at the end, you get a live coaching session with me because you, if you haven't got the results you need, you mm. can get it then. But also you get the option of joining my free group coaching, which is every Monday evening. Mondays because it's the beginning of the week. So, yeah, I'm really excited about it because it makes it much more accessible for everyone. And beat the binge eating trap if you're struggling with eating. Mm. And where can people find you, Hannah? What oh, social? Well, the best place to find me um, at the moment is LinkedIn, but I'm getting someone to sort out my Instagram. 
because I believe I need to be there. I do, I do have an Instagram profile, the Food Freedom Coach, and the name's Hannah Longstaff, Hannah without an H. And you can find me on LinkedIn. Please direct message me. And you have a website as well, don't you? Um, yeah. Mindfoodbodycoach.com. Yeah, just mindfoodbodycoach.com. Yes. And then what will happen is once um, we finish the live, I'll upload the video into um, Instagram as well. But then in a week or so's time, this will go up on my YouTube channel. So yes. if you take yourselves over to Miller Side Therapy and Coaching, you'll find Hannah's interview and all my other interviews. And you'll also find my client testimonials and client interviews. I've also done inter live interviews with me as well. Um, so take yourself over there, go and like and subscribe. I need to get my numbers up. Um, and you can find me on um, YouTube, um, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, and Instagram. Um, so, Hannah, before we wrap up, as much as I could talk to you all day long, what would be, I don't know, maybe a top three tips that you could give to people out there who are struggling either mentally anyway, or particularly with some food disorder? There's so much help out there now. There are charities set up. Beat is a brilliant charity. Um, you can go to your GP. I didn't get much help. In fact, there was no help when I was much younger when I really needed help. I would say um, free resources. Uh, Beat is your best first call. Um, if you're really struggling and you want results quicker and, you know, real results, you know, set up a call with me. Go to my website, Mind Food Body Coach. Just ask for a, a free consultation call. It's all there on my website. You could just um, set a set a, um, a calendar request and, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's have a chat. I'm not here to sell anything to anyone. What I want to do is help free people because, you know, I, this is what I really needed and wanted. And I want, I want that for anyone struggling. Yeah, I love that. And same for me as well. So mm -hmm. I, as I said at the beginning, I work with my clients on a one-to-one, -one, but I've also in February launching my pilot of my group program which is targeting for anyone who's feeling stressed, lacking in confidence. And it's about solving those three problems that I mentioned earlier, going from self-neglect to self-respect, time poor to time abundance, and poor health to poor, poor reboot. Um, and because it's a pilot, I am offering an early bird discount. So anyone who's going to be available um, from the beginning of February, I'm going to run my program. It's going to be a 12-week program, which eventually will all be in the portal. And then it will have a weekly live coaching with me. So you get to answer all, all your questions and things like that. And it's going to be have a focus on the community environment because that's important. And we know that from our business training. And I have that from my therapy training as well. Having that community is so important. Um, but because it's a pilot, I'm going to allow access to people. People can have, to, you know, six months access to it because I want them to help me build the content to go into the portal. So I want to record a lot of the content live. So when it goes into the portal, it's got a bit more interaction. But once it's all in, it will be a 12 week program that it will all be in there. But you're, I'll, I'll add in the live sessions in there as well. So I'm really excited like you, because it gives us the opportunity to serve more people at once as well. Mm -hmm. When we're doing one-to-ones, there's only one of us, right? Yes. But the same as you, if once they've been through the program and there's still, I loved your description actually about, you know, doing the conscious bit and you can do so much with that, which you absolutely can, because that's all the coaching elements of it. But if you're still stuck, then we can, we can do one-to-ones as well and get to your root cause so that you're flying. So thank you so much. Thank you also to Brandon and Piers for commenting on here. We had Brandon saying, loving it, such an important subject. And Piers mm -hmm. said, love this. And these two gentlemen, when they can fill their forms in, they're going to come and join me at one of these sessions as well. So thank you so much, Hannah, for coming on. And I look forward to seeing you in our next Mastermind um, at Big Business Events. And I really hope that anyone who's watching this reaches out to either one of us if we can help in any way. So thank you all for watching and 
I look forward to seeing you next time with my next amazing Unstoppable guest. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Julie.